Welcome back everyone to the French Cooking Academy second episode on the new kitchen if you haven't seen it. Now the last time I was on air you could see that this stove was an electric and I've managed to get that fixed. I've converted it and we are back to having a gas stove and as you can see I'm moving around as well because I also have the wireless microphone. So the sound may sound a little bit different in that video, I will need to adjust but if there's any problem just let me know. Now for today's recipe, because we're still settling in into the kitchen here, we're going to keep things simple, but we're still going to do an interesting dish called the poulet à la Gaston Gérard. There's a bit of history behind that recipe, so if you want to hear about the history of the dish, plus how to make the recipe, keep watching. Now the poulet à la Gaston Gérard is one of these recipes uh, that went down to history. Uh, we've always had kind of, it happened by mistake. Now the more I'm looking at the history of French cooking, I have to say that I'm starting to be a little bit suspicious as how many accidents has actually created dishes. Because the story goes that in the 1930s, the mayor of Dijon, in a town in the, the Burgundy region, called Gaston Gérard, uh, had a food critic uh, for dinner. He was having dinner and the wife decided to make a chicken her way. And apparently as she was in the kitchen making a chicken, a pot of paprika fell into her dish. I'm like, why was a pot of paprika doing there anyway in the first place? But anyway, pot of paprika falls into the dish and she said, oh my God, what I've got, what did I do? So she added some cream, some wine, some cheese, some mustard, made some things, and she served this as the dish she was making for the night, the chicken her way, and the food critic loved it. And of course it was then labeled, not with the name of the lady that made it, but with the husband, it was also the mayor, you know, a bit funny as well, a bit of uh, self-marketing there. I'm not sure, but that's how the story goes. So what to believe, we don't know. It is still an interesting recipe. So for the recipe, it is a good one because it's very simple to make and there's not many ingredients. Free ranch chicken, little bit of paprika, some cheese, cream, wine and mustard. There's no onion, no bukegani, no garlic, nothing. So that is going to be pretty, pretty nice to make. You're going to need I'm going to use here a cast iron Le Creuset pan and we're going to talk a little bit about this because someone asked me to talk about, you know, do we actually need one of those cast iron pots? So get to your pots and pan and let's start cooking. And now let's start with the ingredients, of course. Quick snapshot, what's important in this? A dry wine. I'm using here Muscadet, but you can use any burgundy dry white. Uh, it's fine as well. Good quality chicken. And the cheese is the most important. It has to be either Comté cheese or Gruyere cheese and the mustard has to be a Dijon mustard. Huh? For the rest, simple breadcrumbs, but everything will be listed in the video description. Right, so what's the story behind the cast iron pot? I'm using, of course, a Le Creuset cast iron with the enamel finish. It's a white enamel, which is good because you see what's going on in your cooking. Some pots have got an enamel finish, but it's black. Huh? Do you actually need one of those? I think the answer is yes. Doesn't matter which one you want to have, make sure you got the enamel coating. A lot of recipe I'm seeing, even the oldest one from Paul Bocuse and some technique we're going to use today, really, really call for one of those, okay? Because there's some simmering uh, that needs to be done. We need to uh, do the chicken and it's a very, very good pot to make this kind of ragouts uh, or this kind of this preparation with a chicken or another meat with sauce. So the recommendation is, do you need one? Yes, if you can, do get one. Now for the mise en place, of course, if you get a whole chicken like me, you're going to have to cut it into pieces. But the things we're going to do different today is to actually have all of the pieces of chicken on one side. Okay. And we're going to have the carcass that we're going to keep and we're going to put this in our pan to give some uh, taste. And this is the way it was done back in the days for the home kitchens. And you will note that the drumsticks here also have cut the top here and to make it kind of better to look like in a small plate, doesn't take as, as much space because it's just a piece of bone, you don't really need it. Same for the end of the wings, they have been trimmed. All right, but that's for the chicken. Our mise en place is now ready. I've got all of my chicken, I've got the chicken bones and for the rest, my paprika has been measured. Two tablespoons of mustard, I've got a little bit of butter, my cream, the cheese will be grated at the last minute and I've got my wine. We're now ready to go on the stove and start cooking. And here we are on the stove, the new stove. Huh? So we're gonna start with like a tablespoon of two of like uh, oil in there. Huh? And I put a nudge of butter. Now the good news is like this recipe, 
It is really, honestly, fairly straightforward. And we're not gonna try to actually really sear the chicken too much. This recipe actually has a very, very lightly colored chicken and it's, re it, you know, it, it's uh, trying to get the juices out of the chicken more than browning the chicken because the juice of the chicken is basically what is gonna give uh, the taste to the dish. Huh? So first we're gonna melt the butter with the oil. Okay, so I'm using a medium heat and all what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna grab some piece of chicken. I'm gonna all place them in there with a little bit of salt and pepper and wait for a slight coloration to appear. But really, like I said, it's just a light coloration, nothing, nothing big. So we're all done. We can start with the seasoning. So a grind of pepper, one or two pinches of salt. You don't need to overdo it because we've got different batch. And after that, we're going to do the carcass, remember. Okay, so what do we mean by lightly colored? We mean this. Okay, this kind of color. And it's a, a nice little golden color, a little color on, on each side. So I'm going to turn my pieces of meat around and continue to cook for three to four minutes again. All right, so the time has passed. I'm now gonna reserve my meat on a tray that I've got on the side, and I'm gonna do the carcass, so same thing with the rest of the meat and the carcass. As soon as the carcass are ready, and we're gonna turn the heat down from medium to medium low, and all what we're gonna do here is to leave this carcass to protect the, any burning at the bottom, and we're gonna arrange all of the other pieces of meat we have, and the chicken breast, the chicken tights and everything on top. All my chicken is in. We're now gonna just put the paprika powder and just a sprinkle from a height uh, so it doesn't clump too much. Very gently, and we're gonna kind of toss the paprika in to season everything, but you be careful not to break your pieces of meat. And uh, remember, they're fragile. And then we're just gonna put a lid on, reduce the heat even further, and leave this to cook. All right, I'm done. So I know that some of you are gonna think, oh, this is the same as the goulash. Yeah, it does look the same with the paprika, but you will see that afterwards, it's very, very different. So I'm gonna now put the heat on low, very important, low heat. It's a very, very low cooking. We're gonna gather the juices, we're gonna take a lead, and leave this to cook to 35 to 40 minutes on the dot, okay? So lead on and let's cook this for 30 minutes at least. Right, so my time has now passed 30 minutes. I'm going to open this. And this is the result that we have. It's kind of more steamed. And now I'll show you there's plenty of juice. So what we're going to do here, you're going to be using another dish that goes into the oven. And you're going to take all of the pieces of meat here and put them in the dish, cover with a foil and then keep in the oven at just 60 degrees Celsius just to keep it warm while we're making the sauce. So First, you get all the pieces there and you discard the carcasses. Huh? And I'll show you the juice. All right, so I've removed everything. And just to show you, this is the last piece of carcass that I've got in here. And as you can see in my pan, we've got an actual cooking liquid that has formed, some kind of stock. And this is what we're going to use as a base. All right, so put the carcass away and we're going to make the sauce right away. Right, so we are now ready to make the sauce. Now you've seen that color, it looked like a goulash, but now things are gonna take a totally new turn. All right, so first off, high heat. That's what it takes. And then we're gonna start by heat up the cooking juices and it's all a reduction sauce. Uh, so the sauce is very important in French cooking. So one or two minutes, we're gonna start a good boil on there. So here we are, make sure you've got your cheese, your wine and your cream at the ready. Very interesting here, what we're gonna do is take a good about 100 grams of cheese, Comté cheese, and we're gonna make like a cheese fondue in our pan. That means first melting the cheese and right after that adding some wine into it. Okay, so the temperature is very important to have a high temperature because it is needed to really have your cheese to blend into the juices. Okay, and only when the cheese is like this, and it's, you know, small bits, we're gonna take a good glass of wine, all in, and same thing, very high heat, and bring this to a boil again, because you see what happened? It starts to clump the cheese, and so we need to melt all of that, so let's bring it back to the boil. Now, we got a good boil going, so that took a good three minutes, and what I'm gonna do here, immediately, is a little taste. Mmm, wow, that's typical cheese fondue. It's like eating a cheese fondue with a hint of paprika in the background. 
absolutely brilliant. Okay, so that's the base of your sauce, nothing else. So chicken jus, paprika, cheese, wine, and now we get a little bit of cream. Yeah, so we can put half a cup, anything like that. Twist it in, mix it in. We're just gonna bring it to the boil and finally add some mustard to it. My cream is boiling and it needs to boil really, really strongly because we need to reduce the sauce here. And remember, this is too liquid. We're trying to get something semi-syrupy and it can coat a spoon. We call that the spoon coating consistency. Right, so it's been five or six minutes of reduction. And as you can see, my sauce here has reduced and I think now it's coating a spoon very easily. Okay, so that's what we want. And now we're gonna turn the heat off, totally. Because usually when you add mustard, you don't want to boil the mustard too much. Some people do, but I prefer to turn the heat off and finish the sauce with, you can take one or two tablespoons. So the mustard is up to you, depending how mustardy you want. I think two tablespoons is enough. And of course, coming from Dijon, the Burgundy region and the town of Dijon, they make the mustard there. You would imagine it would be a homemade mustard or something they bought locally. And that is it. I'm just gonna take another spoon. We're gonna taste and correct the seasoning and add the finishing touch to the dish and it's almost done. All right, now my favorite moment, tasting the sauce. Okay. Now for us, it's boiling hot. <laughs> but away from that, are the mustards great addition. Right, it was already tasting like a kind of a cheese fondue with wine and paprika, really good. But with the mustard, it adds another dimension and you can really feel the individual ingredients. So let me show you now what we're gonna do to finish the dish. So how do we finish that chicken a la Gaston Gérard? Where the story goes, you put this in an oven dish, you have your piece of chicken, we've got our sauce, and all what you're gonna do here is to pour all of the sauce little bit by little bit, making sure you cover the chicken. And then we're gonna add some cheese, breadcrumbs, and leave this to broil in the oven. All right, so I've got my chicken, my sauce. What am I gonna do here is take a grater and I'm gonna grate the rest of my cheese on top. And for the final touch, you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of breadcrumbs on the cheese and the chicken, not too much. Up. And this is done, we're, no, we're now gonna put this under the broiler, but we're not gonna be cooking anything. We just want to get that little crust of the cheese and breadcrumbs, and then it is ready to serve. Remember, the chicken is already cooked, so I'm gonna put this in the oven, and then we'll discover the result together. And that's it, the poulet à la Gaston Gérard is here, just out of the oven, it's just been broiled. So as you can see, this is the end result. You want a little crisp on the top of your chicken. Uh, and all of the sauce resides in here and you can serve directly from the dish to the table. Uh, it's a bit of a family dish and you get that beautiful sauce. Now, usually I'm trying the dish directly in here, but for first today, because people keep on asking, I'm gonna try some new angles, I've got more space now. Put a piece of the chicken in a plate and do a live testing. And here we are, my little new tasting station, uh, so we can see exactly what we have. And this is made possible by the new wireless microphone because I don't have a cable I can chicken from around. So here is the chicken basically. Always use the wine you used to cook to drink. Taste the wine first. Mm. It's not bad, a bit warm. And now of course, this chicken. So you know what? I think it's gonna be, the chicken is nice and moist yeah, because it's been kind of steamed. But it's really the sauce. I don't expect any special taste in the chicken itself. Mm. You may hear some chewing noise here. Huh? All right. Yeah, so you feel the paprika and it's really the sauce that's gonna come and coat on the chicken bits here. So that's just standard chicken. Mm. The sauce has got all these intonations of flavors. But what I want to try already is really, what about the crust, the cheesy crust with the sauce and the chicken. And there we have the full experience with the skin, the crispiness, the cheese, the breadcrumbs, sorry, and the sauce. Mm. 
C'est comme de votre cheese fondu. Cheese fondu, slash paprika, slash mustard, and to finish, French style. Never forget the piece of bread. You know what? Like this, and yum. Mm, lovely recipe. And here we are, the poulet à la Gaston Gérard. So was this a real accident? Was this recipe already existed? What I can say is that this is one of these bizarre recipes that tastes absolutely excellent. So if you've never tried this the first time, it is really good, but make sure you love cheese. But that's it for me, guys. As always, if you want to share anything, use the comment section below, ask questions. You can follow me on Instagram, hashtag French Cook Academy, Facebook, the Patreon page to become a supporter, and of course, the online culinary school uh, that you can access. You have all the details on our website, thefrenchcookingacademy.com. Take care all, and I'll see you all next time for another French recipe. Bye-bye.